Shalom everyone, I'm going to continue this series of the Al Quds Yosef at the moment here. Just live in the Beit Midrash here in Ramat Bet Shemesh. We are actually on Siman 284 here in the Al Quds Yosef. And we're talking all about the Haftarah on Shabbat. What's a din with regards to saying the Haftarah on Shabbat? What's a code of conduct with regards to it? So I'm going to start on, uh, it's a shortish uh, Siman, this is. And let's get underway of here. Sif Aleph, Siman 284. Midine Haftarah. Okay. It's improper for one of those who are called up to read from the weekly Torah portion to be called again for the Maftir. If this becomes necessary, such as where it is discovered after the weekly portion has been completed and the Kaddish has been recited that no one is capable of reading the Haftarah also other than someone who has already read from the Torah then it can be permitted that's in parentheses we should say if the Kaddish has not yet been recited then the person who was called up as the seventh person should simply continue and recite the Haftarah without reading from the Torah a second time over here. That will be the code of conduct over here. Okay. Okay. So friends, what's going on here? If the custom of the synagogue of the congregation is to call the rabbi up, as a mafti every year on Shabbat Hazon, which is in many of the congregations, they should not call him up to read from the Torah as one of the seven. If they did call him up to the Torah, they may follow their custom and call him up again for maftis. Then he, then he gets a license to be called up two times. Okay. All the above applies when a mafti reads from the second, from the same Torah scroll as the first seven people. On those occasions when the mafti over here on those occasions when he is called up to read from the first Torah scroll okay on those occasions when the Mufti is read from a second Torah scroll then it's forbidden for anyone who was called up to read from the first scroll to be called up as Mufti to read from the second scroll over here since they may cause people to suspect there is something wrong with the first scroll over there there'll be that chashash and we're going to avoid that at all costs over here now halakha bet maftirin benavi me'inyana shil parashat shua Okay. The Torah of a passage from one of the books of the prophets that is somehow related to the weekly Torah portion, naturally, in many of the cases, this passage is supposed to be at least 21 verses long. But if the subject is discuss, it is discussing comes to a conclusion less than 21 verses, then it may be shorter than that protocol of the 21 Pesukim of it. Halakha Gimel, reading along with the cantor. Tzrichim kol ha-ka'al omar et aftara belachash yachad ima shliach etzibor. You've got to say it quietly with the shliach etzibor, naturally like we talked about before. The preferred text of the haftara, what's a din? Mitzvah la'adeh likro et aftara mitoch seba katu b'ktab yad u'kdusha ala kla. Yavafilu imu rak liyakut aftarot shel shabbatot ashana Okay. The most commendable way to perform the mitzvah of reading the Torah is to use a handwritten scroll made of parchment of it. It's not necessary to use a scroll that contains the entire text of the Prophet. It is us. Sorry about that. Okay. 
Okay. It's okay. It is not necessary to use a scroll that contains the entire text of the Prophet. It is sufficient to use a scroll on which the text of the entire years of Torah is written over here. If such a scroll is not available, the next best thing is to use a printed text of the entire Prophet over there. That is preferable to reading it from the version printed in the Chumash at the end of the parasha. Okay, so friends, what's going on here? If such a scroll over here is not available, the next best thing is to use a printed text, naturally. This is preferable to reading it from the version printed in the Chumash at the end of the parasha. Nonetheless, the common custom throughout the world is to read the Haftarah from the text in the Chumash itself, and it is ancient custom over there. Those who continue this practice certainly have a basis to rely upon where a better choice is available, even though one should take advantage of it. Now, question, what about the children over here, if they're reading the Haftarah itself? Okay. It's permissible to call up a child younger than Bar Mitzvah age to be mafti and to read the Haftarah of it. We should avoid calling up as a mafti someone who is incapable of reading the Haftarah. If the congregation called up someone as mafti and then discovered that he's incapable of reading the Haftarah, someone else should read it out loud while the mafti reads it along with him silently. The two of them may not read it together out loud because of the halachic principle that if two voices speak simultaneously, neither one can be heard distinctly over here. So that's a problem over there. Okay, a double parashiot. What's, what do we do? With, what's the code of conduct with the Haftarah over here? Naturally, Tazri Amatsara, Achremot Kedoshim, and Bahar Bechul Kotai, respectively, no Shabbatot, especially when it's not a leap year, will be said together. What do we do? So what's it in? On those Shabbatot, when we read two Torah portions together, we recite the Haftarah designated for the second portion, since we conclude the Torah reading with that specific portion over there. Some people naturally have the custom to recite the verse of Gualeinu Hashem Tzvaot after complete, completing the Haftarah before reciting the Brachot. There is a basis for this custom and there is no need to cease following it. So if that's a custom you've got in synagogue, to continue that. Now, when the Mafti recites the blessings after the Torah and he reaches the words Emet B'Tzedek over here, no one should respond Amen at that stage in time since this is not the conclusion of the Bracha. Likewise, no one should respond Amen when the Mafti recites the words in the middle of the bracha preceding the haftarah of it. Friends, halacha 9 of it, we're in halacha 10 of it, Siman 284. Friends, what's going on here? Haftarah scrolled in an ark. Can we do that or not? There is a halachic basis for the custom of placing the scroll of the Torah in the ark alongside with the Torah scrolls naturally. We must be careful however not to, let's say, adorn the Torah scroll with different ornaments I've consecrated to beautify the Torah scroll. So a Torah scroll naturally hasn't got the Kedusha of a Torah scroll over here. Friends, we're talking about the mitzvah of Shnai Mikra Ve'echad Targum, which we, we do every week. It's uh, there's different inyanim to why we do it. And this is now in Simon 285 over here. Okay, so let's take this underway. 
First of all, mitzvah rewards. Talmudic scholars to read it. Halacha Aleph. 285, Even though that we read it in the synagogue on Shabbat, we listen to the, naturally the Shlech Tzibor doing it, there's a mitzvah to do it, to recite it twice with a Targum of Unklus, some people will do at Rashi also. Everyone that is going to, uh, let's say, he's going to listen to it from the Shliach Sibur, from the Chazan, naturally on Shabbat. The reward is infinite over here. It's, it's a long life, that is his uh, thing. Even if you're learning the whole time Torah, you have to listen, do along with the Shliach uh, Tzibor, listen to the Torah reading on Shabbat. You've got to do it two times, you've got to read it yourself. And one time with the Targum. Uncle, some people will do Rashi. If you're busy, you're writing Torah thoughts the whole week and you're learning Talmud the whole week, you can postpone fulfilling the mitzvah until Friday evening when you cannot write anything at stage. In time, it's natural on Shabbat. The Malachot does not claim that. See, we know writing. So then you've got time to concentrate on that. Halacha bet at the moment regarding Haftarah on Shabbat. So the whole Haftarah reading is not included in uh, the Torah reading itself on Shabbat or on the Shnai Mikra rule. There are many people that will actually do Shnai Mikra on the Haftarah reading also. If Aramaic is not understood, Rashi's commentary, is that going to be better? What do you think, friends? If you don't understand that also, the Aramaic, then say the Aramaic, and if you've really got a fear for heaven, you'll also do the Rashi, so you'll understand the translation of it. Now, Halakha Dalet. Okay, so what's going on, friends? According to instructions of Kabbalists, the proper way to fulfill this mitzvah is to recite each verse twice, the Targum of that verse once, and then continue on to the next verse. This is naturally, to do it straight, this is naturally the custom of the pious individuals. They fulfill the mitzvah of reading Shnai Mikra Targum over the entire weekly Torah portion on Friday in one sitting without interruption. So ideally not to take breaks, do it in different sessions, do it in one big go. And Friday, maybe that's the optimum time over here. But we will go on. Okay. Okay, so friends, even when one reaches the verse of Shema Israel, it is permissible to recite it two times, one after the other. Although it's normally forbidden to do this, as it gives the impression that one believes in two gods that could give that idea, that does not apply in this specific instance, since he is reciting each verse from the beginning of the parasha. It is obvious that he is repeating this verse for the sake of the mitzvah of Shnai Mikra Vachatargum, and not because he harbors any strange beliefs of it. Halacha hey at the moment. What's going on? Mitzvah mina mabuchar, shiashlim likrot ha parsha kodem shiachol be Shabbat. Okay, if someone does not manage to complete this mitzvah before Shabbat begins, he must complete it at least before the Shabbat morning meal. Okay, that's a window of time. Omikol makom. Pashut she'en lachev machmad ze ha'achila ad ha'chatzot. Vim lo ashlim kodem ha'achila, yashlim acha ha'achila ad zman mincha. Obediyavad, ad rebi'i be Shabbat, v'yesh omrim ad shmini ad seret. Okay, 
if you don't do it uh, before Friday night or Shabbat morning, uh, is there an Itza or not? If someone doesn't manage to complete this mitzvah before Shabbat begins, he must complete it at least before the Shabbat morning meal. If he has not yet completed it and okay. hour is approaching midday, he should not delay the meal any longer. In that case, he should make sure to complete the mitzvah before he recites the mincha prayer of Shabbat. If he fails to do that, he can still make up this mitzvah until the following Tuesday evening. Wow. Some poskim rule that it's possible to make it up even before Yom Tov on Simchat Torah. So you've got like that length of time, but that's not ideal. Halakha 6, Bab. When to interrupt? There's no specific rule to interrupt between them or not. Ideally, you should read it all in one go without interrupting. Zolat. If he's thirsty, he's Maybe he needs to say the after blessing or to drink. So it's a rabbi in the congregation. He has he's in the middle of Shnai Mikra Bachatago. And they ask him to see a drasha in the Beit Knesset. He can interrupt at that point in time and he can see the drasha while he's doing the Shnai Mikra Khatabu. Halakha Bab. Okay. Okay, friends. Let me just see over here. Okay. The Halakha Zayn. Talmit Chacham Akure Shnai Mikra Khatabu. If it's a Talmud Chacham that is uh, doing Shnai Mikra Vachatar, if someone interrupts him, asking him a question, he can be interrupted and can answer the question. Dividing over the week, some people might want to do five, seven times a week. Can you do this or not? Yeshno Gimli Krobo Kolyom, Echa Achat Vila Shachrit, Nixat Amav Hasha, Shnai Mikra Vachatar. Okay, some people might want to divide it up through the days because they don't have maybe enough time in one shot. Right. So you can do this Mikra the great Rabbanim, they said it all in one shot. But if you in the press of time, you don't have the entire time to do it, you may follow the ruling of the Shulchan Aruch and divide it up into different times. How about Friday night? Is that the optimum time to say it or not? Should you do it then? Mm-hmm. If you don't have time during the week, you're very, very busy, many, many different commitments. On Friday night, you can do the Echad, the Shnai Mikra Bachatar Gum. Okay, Halacha Yud. Reading along with the cancer, does that count as one thing? Mi Shashad Hukalo Biyote. Someone's got a very pressed time. The Eilo Pano Ikla Likro Latsmo Etapasha Shnai Mikra Bachatar Gum. No time to do that. Nachon Lo Horot Lo Shikra Belachashet Kola Pasha in the Shrek Tabor. A Koreba Torah, Pasuko Basu, the Shub Yachso, the Keno Baam Shnia Bebeto. There's an Eitzah. He can say it with the Chazan, with the Shliach Tibo, and then he has to say it once. And then say the Targum once. Maybe it will take, say, 15, 20 minutes. So, you'd say, then you fulfill the obligation. So friends, okay. the cancer can read the entire parsha once in preparation for reading it for the congregation, then read it for the congregation and afterwards read the Targum for himself. However, it is done, everyone must read the text of Shnai Mikra Vachat Targum himself. No one can fulfill this obligation by listening to the cantors chanting the parsha. So it's not enough to listen to it, you have to actually say it yourself. Halakha Yudala. When the cantors slow, it could be he slows, so maybe you can do, say it twice in the Targum once during that time period, can you? 
אם שליח ציבור מעריך בטעמים בקריאתו בצורה באופן שיכול היחיד להפסיק לקרוא את שני מקרא וחצר גוף בעת קריאת תורה רשאי לעשות כן יוצא ידי חובה אף על פי שעד שקורא שני מקרא וחצר גוף לעצמו אינו מאזין לקריאת הפרשת על ידי השליח ציבור חוץ מקריאת פרשת זכור ופרשת פרה שחייב להאזין לקראתן מפי השליח ציבור בסבב תורה וכל זה ש... כש... כשקורא הפרשה בלחש ויש עשרה ולדיו המקשיבים לשליח ציבור או שקודם קריאת התורה הסב פניו לצד והתחיל לקרוא מכל מקום הנכון הוא שבכל הפרשיות ראוי למדקדק בדרכיו לכוון דעתו ולשמוע קריאת התורה מפי השליח ציבור If the cantor is slow and enjoys lengthening his rendition of the notes of the words, it's possible to take advantage of the full time to pull the mitzvah shnai mikro v'chat tarkum for oneself silent and not follow along as the cantor reads it during the reading of Pashat Zachor and Pashat Parah. However, everyone must read, listen attentively to the cantor. One may do this only if one is certain that there are ten others in the congregation who are listening to the cantor and following Along with him. Alternatively, someone turns his face away from the stand where the Torah reading is taking place before the cantor begins reading, thereby demonstrating he is not participating in the Torah reading. He may use the time for the mitzvah of Shnai Mikra Bachatagum, even though this practice is technically permissible. Anyone who cares to conduct himself in a commendable manner should always listen attentively to the Chazan as he chants from the Torah scroll. Women! Have women got the mitzvah of doing this? Isha p'tzura m'likro b'kol shabbat shnai mikra v'chatargum Woman hasn't got the obligation to say shnai mikra v'chatargum Yud Kimmel Ain't sadik likro et pasha shnai mikra v'chatargum V'yamim tovim When it comes to yom tovs, you do not have to say shnai mikra v'chatargum a bit That doesn't apply How about Yud Dalit? With the te'amim Do you have to say it with notes, the correct notes of it? V'suke ha'mikra sadik likro b'tamei ha'mikra והתרגום בלי טעמים ודווקא. אולם גם מי שאינו יודע לקרוא את הפרשה עם הטעמים חייב בקריאת הפרשה שני מקרא ואחד תרגום. וחובה קדושה על ההורים ועל המלמדים ללמד את בני ישראל בטעמי המקרא כדי שיקראו שני מקרא ואחד תרגום בניגון כדת וכדין. What's going on here friends? One should read the verses of the parasha with obviously naturally the notes, the tunes, which one is going to do. But one should recite the Targum without any tune at all. So when you're doing Unklas or Rashi, it might be, you don't, have, you don't say the tunes with it. Even if one does not know how to chant the Torah with the traditional liturgical notes, one is obligated nonetheless in the mitzvah or shnai mikra v'achat Targum. One who does know how to chant it with the traditional notes must do so when fulfilling this mitzvah over here. It is a secret obligation on the part of all parents and teachers to see to it that the youth is taught how to read the notes and chant the Torah so that it will be able to fill the mitzvah shnai mikra v'achat targum properly. So, it's very important when they're in the age of Chinuch at 11, 12 years old, teach them how to actually read it with the notes also. That's a zenith of the mitzvah. Straining the eyes, can you do it? Okay. Tetvav, oh dear friends, what's going on? אף מי שחלה בעיניו ומצטער בקריאת שני מקרא ואחת תרגום חייב לקרוא את הפרשה שני מקרא ואחת תרגום או שישמע פרשה מאחר וכיוון לצאת ידי חובה Even let's just say like if you read too much causes pain in one's eyes for one reason or another one is obligated to fulfill the mitzvah שני מקרא ואחת תרגום He may do so by listening to another individual with intentions to fulfill his obligation Okay friends, we are in Tetzayim Okay, what's going on? Blind and muted people. What's it in? Yesh Omri, Shagam Hasom, Ivet. Chaya Bishna Mikra Bachatar Gom, Bokol Shabbat, Kedina Bakia. And our Poskim rule that a blind person is obligated in this mitzvah of Shna Mikra Bachatar Gom also. Belechen, Sadik Shishma Mache, Kriya Pasha, Shna Mikra Bachatar Gom. Bichaben, Lotio, Yedehova. The Gam U Yitkaben, let's say Yedehova, that Kriya. Vechen, Mishna Se Ilem. ואין הוא יכול לדבר ולקרוא, ישמע קריאה מאחר. אוקיי, אז a blind person should listen to someone else reading it with the intention of fulfilling the mitzvah by listening. Let's say the person who reads it out loud for him must have in mind that he's reading it on behalf of his blind companion. So, 
But a person that's going to read this should have the intention for the other person. Likewise, someone who is mute and cannot read to himself should listen to someone listen else to read it for him. Okay, so friends, now we are in the halakha yud sign. Using a Torah scroll for it, huh? should you, do you need to use a separate Torah with regards to this mitzvah or not? Shalai mikra. Mish v'kai v'kriyat ha-parsha v'tzah me mikra v'nukudot k'ra'oi mitzvah min ha-mubchar l'kro shalai mikra v'metoch sefer Torah. If you are an expert with regards to reading it, then the ideal mitzvah, the optimum, is to actually read it from the Sefer Torah. V'yikra targum mitoch ha-chumash v'vrat mishu shliyach tzibu ha-kore v'torah v'baki v'kriyat ha-parsha v'taima v'rotze l'kro parsha mitoch sefer ha-nimtza v'heichal k'day shi'e ragil v'kriyat ha-parsha shi'e r'kel v'zeh v'nachon shelo l'tzertel l'tzsefer Torah l'teba v'ulam im e'no v'ki m'utav sh'yikrena mitoch ha-mash sh'yish bo ha-tzamim v'nukudot v'lo yikrena kriya mishov the very best way to perform this mitzvah is to read the Hebrew text or the parasha from a genuine Torah scroll and the Targum from a printer text. This is especially so for someone who is an experienced cantor and can recite, can read the Torah scroll with that, the correct literal notes. When doing this, however, one should not remove the Torah scroll from the ark to the reading table. Instead, one should stand and read from the Torah scroll inside the open ark. If someone is not fluent in the Torah reading with its notes, it is preferable that he recite it correctly from a printed book rather than recite it with errors from a genuine Torah scroll. In any event, one may not recite a blessing over the Torah scroll when reading it, reading from it in private. And two more halachot and we're going to wrap up for today. Uh, during Shiva, do you do, do Shnai Mikra Vachat also, someone that is mourning will have to uh, do this. Parshat Bezot Abracha, what's the deal? Okay, Parshat Bezot Abracha, Yish Likro Shana Mikra Vachat Agum. Biyom Oshana Rabba, Biyom Shachach Likro Oshana Rabba, Yikra Bishmini Atzeret, Kodem Shukrit, O Yachad Emi Ashliach Tzibor. In the land of Israel, where Parshat Bezot Abracha is read on Yom Tov naturally, on Shmini Atzeret, one should read Shnai Mikra Vachat Agum of that parsha on Hoshana Rabba the preceding day. If someone forgot to do so, he should read it on the morning of Shmini Atzeret before reciting Shachrit or read it together with the cantor as we learned in Halacha 10. I'd like to dedicate this Lilu Nishmat Rabbi Leo D's wife, Leah, and his two daughters that, uh, that were killed during Pesach in 2023. May this be uh, Lilu Nishmat. Have a great day, guys.